Okay, mathematical models. So, first of all, this is why you really should learn this stuff. Probably not a good reason. Um, but <clears throat> we do use math a lot to model things in the real world. Uh, and to sort of get started moving in that direction, we'll look at a couple of examples um, that are algebra-based, but hopefully they'll help us. So let's start with uh, let p be a point on the graph of y equals x squared minus 4. We want to express the distance from p to the origin as a function of x. So um, I have an idea what we need to do, but not shit, not 100% not sure. So it's generally a good idea to sort of make a little sketch of this stuff, see what's going on. So x squared minus 4 goes to negative 4. It goes to negative 2 over here and a positive 2. And so this is x squared minus 4. Okay. Um, let's put a point p on here. Let's put it right there. So that's p. It has an x and a y. And we want to know the distance from the origin to p. So that one. Well, one way we can do that we can make a little right triangle. That's x, that's y, and then that's your distance. So your distance squared would be x squared plus y squared. So then your distance becomes the square root of x squared plus y squared. And although that is a model, unfortunately it doesn't quite put it in terms of x yet, sorry, but we do know that y is x squared minus 4. So, y is x squared minus 4. And then this is a model. And you probably could leave that. Um, but, because I know what's going to happen a little later in this problem, um, it actually helps to multiply this out. So, x squared times x squared. Keep in mind that squaring it really means you have two of these. So, that's uh, x to the fourth minus 4x squared twice, plus 16. So finally we get to the distance as a function of x is x4. 1 minus 8 is so a negative 7x squared plus 16. Okay, there's our model. So that was a. B, find the distance if x is 0. So d of 0 is, let's see, the square root of 0 minus 0 is 0 square root of 16 is 4. Um, we probably could have figured it out right here, because it is just that distance. At 1, though, you can't just look at it. So even for 1, we would already have to sort of have this model. So let's see what happens there. 1 to the 4th is 1, minus 1 is squared is still 1. So we get, what, 1 minus 7 plus 16 is the square root of 10? And I probably want you to leave that in this case because we don't have a word problem with context. So don't, I wouldn't figure out what that is worth, at least not for this one. Okay, and then the last one, that's uh, the annoying one in this problem, is we have to plug that thing in. And so when we plug that in, we need to uh, raise it to the fourth power first. Then we're going to subtract 7 times the square. And then we need to add 16. So let's see what the square root of 2 squared would be. So the square root of 2 squared would be 2 over, don't forget to square the bottom, 2 over 4, so that's a half. And then to the fourth would be that thing squared again. So if we had square root of 2 over 2 to the fourth, we would get a half squared, which is 1 over 4. Okay, so that helps a little bit. So I can plug those in. Let's see what I end up with then. So I have 1 over 4 minus 7 times a half is 7 over 2 plus 16. Let's make a common denominator here of over 4. So 1 over 4 minus 14 over 4 plus 64 over 4. Add and subtract and we get the square root of 51 over the square root of 4, but that's 2. So that's my final answer. Square root of 51 over 2. Okay. Next model. Um, 
it's a little closer to a real world thing, still fairly algebraic because we have another quadratic that's given, but at least it's asking us for a rectangle and we need to express the area. So let's see what we have. A rectangle has a coordinate and quadrant, one on the graph of y equals 9 minus x squared. So let's graph that then and see where we are. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. We're here. 9 minus x squared, so if we're at 3, we'd be at 0, and if we're at 3, we'd be at 0 here. Uh, it has one coordinate quadrant, 1, so I don't really care about this part. So let's see, I just actually want this part, because it says I'm always in quadrant 1. Um, one corner on the graph of that thing, so one corner on it, one at the origin, a third on a positive y, so if it's a rectangle then that has to be horizontal. So let's say it's, it's this one, and then it has to go down as well. Yeah, it's not a great <clears throat> rectangle, but it will have to do. Okay, so there's my rectangle. So what am I supposed to do with that? Find the area as a function of x. Well, the area is base times height. And the base is x, and the height is y, so x times y. And just like in the previous example, we let's write it as a function x of x. Um, we know that y is 9 minus x squared, so we're going to plug that in, and I'm going to multiply it out, so that's 9x minus x cubed. Okay, there's our model. B says, what's the domain of A? Well, uh, the area depends on x, and it has to be in quadrant 1, so we know x is greater than 0. Um, it's representing an area so it can't be equal to zero and the largest x we can have is three well actually it has to be less than three because otherwise we wouldn't get a rectangle so my domain for this function just by making that little graph is going to be uh, zero less than x is less than three okay. c graph it well, graph the area function. So this is not the area function. The area function is 9x minus x cubed. And since we have a fairly limited domain, we can only go from 0 to 3. Um, I'm just going to plug in all the numbers, all the integers from there to there. So 0 would be 0. This one is 9 minus 1, so that's 8. 9 times 2 is 18 minus 8, that's 10 and 3 times 9 is 27 minus 27 is 0. So graphing that would make it look a little like this. So let's see. Um, I need to go up to 10, it looks like. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So at 0, I'm at 0. At 1, I'm at 8. At 2, I'm at 10, and at 3, I'm back at 0. So I know it's a cube, so it's a cube, right? So it, it wiggles like this. Now, it looks like that might be the highest point. Um, don't know if it is or not, but since I don't know any better right now, we're going to pretend that that's the highest point. And there you go. So that's the area of that rectangle. Let's see. Okay, for what value of x is the area the largest? Um, okay, so we have several options there. We can just assume that this is the highest point. And, <clears throat> and based on what we see right now, that would be uh, pretty good. Um, you can just do trial and error. So if you think it's 2, uh, and it looks like it's going down pretty fast here, so maybe it's between 1 and 2. So like, what happens at 1.5, for example? So if you plug that in, so what do we get? 9 times 1.5 minus 1.5 cubed. So that would be 10.125. So it looks like it actually might be a little higher, somewhere between 1 and 2. Okay, so trial and error would get you the answer. Uh, but this would be a good case or a good instance to use uh, some technology. So 
I have a algebra here. So here's the function. So it's 9x minus x cubed. So there it is graphed and from 0 to 3. And you can see that it, it's occurring somewhere over here. Um, so pretty close to the 2. So I probably, you could try to guess a little bit then and, and you know, maybe try 1.8, 1.9, see what happens. Um, however, in GeoGebra, I can also put in a little function and that will tell me exactly what the maximum is. And so based on what GeoGebra is telling me, it, it occurs at 1.73. Um, so if you're wondering how I did that, so here is the function, 9x minus x cubed. And then I told it to find the maximum for f of x between 0 and 3. And so that point here, 1.73, is a pretty good, um, it's not really an estimate, it's a pretty good approximation of what it is. So let's see, 10.39, I think, was the highest that we got. So 10.39 is the maximum area based on using some technology. All right, last example. Um, manufacturer of a children's playpen makes a square model can be opened at one corner and attached at right angles to a wall or perhaps the side of a house. So if we have three feet in length, the open configuration, so open means that we use a wall here and then we do three and three and three and three. Um, so we get an area of 18 feet squared. Okay, so the, the question here is now what happens if we actually angle this a little bit? So what if we make this look like more like a house, would that increase the area? Now, if we angle it some, then this distance from here to here, that's now less than six, right? Because the maximum it could be was six, but if we pull this up a little and push it out, so hopefully you, you can sort of see that, you know, that's three and that's three, and that means that this one now is less than three, and this one has to be less than three. So. Express the area of this configuration as a function of the distance x. So x is the distance between the two parallel sides. Okay. So how do we do that? Well, let's first see what we have. Um, so in A, we know that the area is... It's a rectangle right there. So we have the area of a rectangle. And then we have the area of a triangle over here. So we need to add those two. So that's the area of a triangle. Um, the area of the rectangle, I know the area of the rectangle is 3 times x. It's base times x, so 3 times x. So that's good. The area of the triangle is a half times x times our height. And since it has to be completely in x, we somehow have to come up with an expression for h that deals with an x. So let's look at a little bit closer. So we see here where we have a right triangle and that side is 3 so let's let's look at just at that side over here. so like this like that okay so that's a right triangle we're saying that the hypotenuse is 3 so if the distance from here to here is x then that must be half of x and then this distance is your height and since it's a right triangle we can again say, well, x, sorry, h squared plus a half x squared is 3 squared. And that means we can write something for height. We can write that the height is 3 squared is 9 minus, this is actually x squared over 4. And then we do need to take the square root of that. Well, that's not really pretty. See if we can clean that up. So make that over 4. So that becomes a 36 minus x squared over 4. And that means that we can take the square root of the bottom there. So it ends up being the square root of 36 minus x squared all over 4. So the area of the triangle is going to be a half times x times the square root of 36 minus x squared over 4. And here we said we needed to add those. So my final answer will be, so the area of the playpen is going to be the area of the rectangle, which is 3x, plus the area of the triangle. And the area of the triangle is a half times x 
times uh, the square root of 36 minus x squared. So this is, let's put the x on top, square root of 36 minus x squared. And I think I just realized I made a mistake. So the square root of 4, I said was 4. That's clearly not true. So the square root of 4 over here needs to be a 2. Let's make that a 2. The square root of 4 is 2. So this became a 2. And then 1 half times that 2 makes it an over 4. And then that would be my area expression. So let's see. There's the model that we're going to use. So the model says 3 times x plus x squared of 36 minus x squared over 4. Okay. Find the domain of A. Wow. All right. Domain of A. Um, well, again, it's area, so it has to be positive. Let's see that in red. Um, so area is going to be larger than zero. Uh, since area depends on an x, x needs to be larger than zero. Um, looking at the picture, the largest that x can be is if you have this configuration, where x is now represented by this side. And so the largest that we can have is x is 6. So based on the word problem, I would say x has to be less than 6, because otherwise, um, well, we just don't have any more, because it's two sides of 3 together. And I do have a square root here, and I need to worry about that a little bit. So the square root of 36 minus x squared, so that would imply that 36 minus x squared has to be larger than or equal to 0 for that to work. Uh, but again, it would have to be greater than 0, because otherwise you wouldn't have a value here, which is, yeah, I guess it could be greater than. But when you solve this, you actually end up with, you know, x has to be less than 6 to make it work. Okay, we already had that. So that's the domain. Um, find the area if x is 5. So we can just plug in a 5. Five squared is 25. And because this is a word problem, we certainly can plug this in. So that's 15 plus, get a calculator, plug it in. And I'm going to cheat. I did this already. So that's 19.15. So that's the, the area of 5. Graph A of X, and for what value of X is the area the largest? What is the maximum area? Okay. So this function is not really, it's not realistic to graph it without a calculator at all because of the square root. Uh, so I think I have another one here that we can look at. So if I look at this one, so I put the function in, so that's what it looks like. Notice that it stops here at 6, because you can't have a negative square root. Uh, you can't see the square root there. I don't know. Okay, put it in as a power of a half. Um, and then to find the maximum, again, let me see if it's over here. We found the maximum. Uh, so the point right there, you can see visually what it would be. So we can eyeball it. looks like it's pretty close to to five and a half to six, somewhere in there. And if you look over here, it's 5.58, 19.82. So 5.6, 19.8, something like that. So this was the x that we needed, and then that would be the maximum area, I think. Let me check that. 19.8, 5.6 and 19.8. Got these backwards. So, okay, that's it. Thanks.